So hi everyone and welcome to this session on introduction to artificial intelligence by Advancer. My name is Atash Shah and I am the founder and CEO at Advancer Ready Ventures. I'll shortly give you a more detailed introduction to myself. Initially, let us quickly go through the agenda for today. So for the first uh, few minutes, uh, let us introduce ourselves. Who is Advancer? What do we do? How do we help you? Then we'll go to the core of this session, which is a brief introduction to artificial intelligence. What exactly is AI? How all of us have actually seen AI in real life implementation, but probably never realized it. What are its applications in the real world? And then we'll move on to the section on careers where we understand how to pursue AI as a career. What are the options, opportunities, data with relation to careers? Then give us a few minutes to introduce again our program, the Certified Artificial Intelligence Specialization course to you, where, which is uh, in association with TCSIN, which will help you to create a career in AI. And then I'll open up the floor for questions and answers. So any questions that you may have, uh, please feel free to ask once I open up the floor for that. Till that time, I would request your patience. And as there are a lot of people attending today's session, Please do hold on to your questions till the end. All right. So about Advancer, Advancer is an IIM IIT alumni venture. And what we are is a data science and AI knowledge app which is designed to meet the learning needs for all kinds of enthusiasts, be it people who are new to data science and AI like many of yourselves here or those who are already working in this industry and would like to you know upskill and reskill themselves with newer tools and technologies that keep coming up what we are is one of india's leading data science and ai training providers and over the last uh, six and a half years we have trained more than 6500 people globally in data science and ai if any one of you has gone through the popular analytics india magazine or analytics with your blogs you would notice that they have rated us as one of india's top five data science training institutes coming to my brief introduction my name is Atash Shah. i am the co-founder and ceo at advancer and i have over 14 years of experience in the education management and investment banking industries before starting Advancer, I worked with global investment banks like Lehman and Nomura. And I am a postgraduate in management from Indian Institute of Management Lucknow and also an engineer from Mumbai University. My co-founder on the data science vertical is Mr. Lalit Sacha. Lalit has over nine years of experience in data science and AI. He's worked as a data scientist handling end-to-end -end projects. And he's a postgraduate from ISI Kolkata and also a BTEC from IIT Kanpur. And that's how we are an IIM IIT ISI alumni venture. So what exactly is AI? Right? All of us have heard of artificial intelligence this and artificial intelligence that. But can anyone here tell me what exactly is AI why don't you guys put in your responses on the chat and I'll read out some of those responses let's see how many of you actually understand what is AI and how many of you are yet to have a better understanding of the same so I'll pause here for a few seconds collect your responses read them out read out a few and then move forward all right okay so manoj says the machines which will do work in the form of human beings uh -huh. vikram says artificial intelligence is automation of the system 
All right, Kalpana doesn't have much of an idea. Reshma says simulation of human in intelligence in machines. All right, that's interesting. Then we have Hari Krishnan saying AI is a computer program based human decision making in some areas. All right. Kashi's AI means the task which a human does if it is done by robots or computers. All right. Okay, Kiran says training machines to have human like thinking. And Surya Prakash says intelligence created by data input for better outcome or processes. Okay, Yash says intelligence demonstrated by machines. Okay, so I've got a lot of responses here. I won't read out each and every one of them in the interest of time, but suffice to say that some of you have a brief idea of what is AI some not exactly so let me quickly take you through where first of all we have seen artificial intelligence in our daily lives okay all of us at some point or the other have uploaded our photographs and videos to Facebook to Instagram etc right and when we upload these photographs whoever is in that photo gets automatically tagged with their names how does facebook know that how does facebook know that xyz is in this photo if it either it's you or it's maybe your friends or your family or someone right how does facebook know that person so this is where something called as computer vision which is a part of artificial intelligence comes into play over all these years facebook has collected multiple or i won't say multiple sorry that's a very small thing facebook has actually collected billions of photos each of those photos have had people many other again billions of photos have had you know billions of their users in those pictures Earlier, Facebook used to ask you to tag whoever was in the photo, right? What was Facebook doing there? It was actually collecting data. It was collecting data about who is in that photo. And what it was collecting was it was trying to recognize the face of the people who are in the photos. So if you are able to tag, let's say, four or five different photographs with the same person in it, Facebook would start Facebook's AI algorithm would start learning from that and over these years it now knows what almost each and every one of its billions of users looks like and it's you know these computer vision algorithms that it uses have become so good that even if you you know age as you age maybe you grow up if you're a man you grow a beard or a mustache or you grow your hair longer or make it shorter or go bald it doesn't matter it is able to recognize that face and this is an application of artificial intelligence where a computer system an ai algorithm has developed the ability to recognize billions of people around the world the ability which no human on this earth has the ability to recognize billions of faces Today, as a human, you will probably be able to rec recognize, let's say, 100 people or 200 people at max, right? And that too, if you see them frequently. But AI is able to recognize the faces of people at scale across billions of people in a very, very quick time. So 
this is an example of artificial intelligence that we have been seeing actually for years now. Let's take another example. A lot of us use, you know, Netflix, Prime Video, Hotstar. Apart from that, we also shop on Amazon, we shop on Flipkart and multiple other e-commerce websites. On each of these sites, on each of these apps, apart from what we are browsing, they also give us recommendations. They recommend certain, let's say if you're watching Netflix, they recommend certain other shows to us or other movies to us. If you are shopping on Flipkart, they recommend certain other, you know, uh, products to us. How are these rec uh, recommendations actually coming up? How are com these companies making these recommendations? And remember, at any given point of time, there are billions of people, or sorry, at least hundreds of millions of people browsing through an Amazon website, trying to purchase something or watching Netflix. And for each of these people, they are able to show different recommendations. Something called as personalization. How can they do that? They do that through something called as machine learning, creating a recommendation engine. A recommendation engine takes in all the data that exists in terms of what you have done with the website on the website or on the app in the past, what you're doing at the moment, what other people like you have, let's say, seen on Netflix, what other shows have they watched after that, etc. So at any given point of time, this system is actually collecting huge amounts of data about you. And it is able to understand the patterns and then it can actually show these recommendations to you. So that there are no humans sitting at the back end saying, wow, Somnath or Swati has come on to our app. Let's show her these recommendations. No, this is a system which is analyzing your data in real time and is able to showcase to you all these different recommendations and personalize them for you within a couple of seconds. So this machine learning system called as a recommendation engine is very important for these companies because the more accurate the recommendations that they provide you, the more likely it is that you will continue browsing or you will end up purchasing something or you will continue watching those shows. And hence their revenues keep on growing. So these recommendations are very closely tied in to the recommendations that these companies are able to make. Let's move on to another example. This is something that we probably haven't seen in India yet. It's called Google Duplay. Google Duplay is actually a system, an artificial intelligence system created in the US, which can actually behave, talk and understand everything just like your personal assistant or personal secretary would. So this Google Duplay system will, uh, you know, let's say you want to make a reservation at a restaurant. You can ask Google Duplay to make that call for you. It will call the restaurant and it will talk in a human voice. It will tell the restaurant, make a reserve, please can you make a reservation for Mr. XYZ at 8 p.m. The person on the other end doesn't even know that he or she is actually talking to a computer or an AI system. He may reply that, sorry, we are fully booked at 8 p.m., but we have a slot available at 9 p.m. Would you like that? This AI system is actually able to recognize that and understand that and take a decision. Then it will say, sorry, XYZ is actually going to have another meeting at nine o'clock. So we only need a reservation at eight o'clock. This is a human-like conversation which the AI system is actually having with the person on the other end. 
and this is a system which has the potential to actually take away you know hundreds of thousands of jobs millions of jobs from people who are doing such kind of work on a daily basis administrative assistants call center agents you know all of these things over the next five to ten years will get automated out through ai um, is my voice clear to all of you someone is just facing some issue with the voice it's clear no issues uh, some of you have some issues it seems just check your own uh, you know guys networks and audio settings probably that may be fluctuating as it's clear for most of you right so someone asked is google duplay and google assistant the same and the answer is uh, not exactly it's uh, two different things so google duplay is far more advanced in that sense another example of artificial intelligence usage in real life when you go to a retail shop and you're shopping there what is the most you know irritating thing for you when you go shop in a retail shop anyone with any ideas what is what is the most irritating thing you find in a retail shop the queue at the checkout yeah that's right you have, i mean you probably wanted to buy you know a couple of things and then you have to stand for 10 minutes in a queue to check out and pay your bill amazon has actually solved that through ai it has launched stores in the us called amazon go stores where you can walk in with an app on your phone the amazon pay app and your bluetooth switched on you walk in you grab whatever you want to grab you put it in your bag you walk out and you are billed automatically your money is deducted from your amazon pay account no one is there to actually you know create a bill as to what you bought total it up give you discounts etc right how does it do that so there are cameras all across the store whatever you buy these cameras are able to see that recognize that product see you put it in your bag as you do that it adds it to your bill now suppose you changed your mind you took out the product and put it back on the shelf it deducts it from your bill right now in a store there could be literally thousands of products which are sold thousands of different products different packet sizes varieties etc it is able to recognize all of that through again computer vision and bill you exactly for that right so again ai has replaced people working in the stores finally another last example is that of siri all i think uh, there may be quite a few apple iphone users here who are familiar with siri or you know you have google now or google assistant on android etc you talk to them you tell them to do something and they do it this is actually ai which has been developed years ago and we have been using it for years now so for all those who think here that ai is something that exists that is going to exist only in the future that is not correct because ai is already here ai is already doing things which were unimaginable it is already revolutionizing the world and in the future it's going to make huge and humongous changes to the way people work people live people behave and it is completely going to change the way you know uh, jobs and jobs exist in this world many jobs will completely disappear and many new jobs will come up in their place so now let's come to the theoretical definition of what exactly is artificial intelligence 
so ai is the ability of a machine to and when i say a machine i don't mean a factory machine it's a computing system a computer to perform cognitive tasks which are commonly associated with humans what do i mean by cognitive tasks here cognitive are the ones which require thinking you need to think about it to do it right that is what i mean by cognitive it is the ability of this machine or the computer program to think and learn now this is quite important because <clears throat> you know it, it it is not just about doing uh, ma manual labor or replacing people in doing manual labor it is about getting people to do things which requires a human to think and not just think but be able to learn while doing it a lot of things that we humans have done over the years right from you know from when we were babies understanding language being able to speak reading being able to write is something that our brains have learned and that is very important for an ai system that it has also to be able to learn because not everything can be fed to it if you you know hard code a program and make it rules based that is not ai that is a rule based system ai is something that should be able to think and learn on its own so the concept of ai is based on the idea of building machines capable of thinking acting and learning like humans and it's a concept which combines you know computing technology uh maths domain understanding to create machines which are capable of interacting with their environment and acting upon data in a manner considered intelligent so what do i mean by this third point it's quite a long you know point here so there are three aspects here computing technology computing technology is the technology which is used right from the point of collecting data to storing that data to processing that data to analyzing that data making an ai system out of that data deploying that ai system it is the end to end usage of computing technology and in ai we are not talking about data which is a few rows and columns we are literally talking about billions of data points here it requires huge amount of data to create an ai system mathematics provides you the algorithms and building blocks which are used to analyze this data and create these ai systems so there are multiple advanced you know algorithms math, uh, sorry mathematical algorithms or statistical algorithms which can be used to create these ai systems sorry just give me a second just give me one second guys finally there is domain understanding domain understanding is about the understanding that you have about the business the company the industry for which you are working right it is uh, for instance if you are creating an ai system for the retail industry you need to understand the retail industry quite well if you are creating an ai system for a bank you need to be able to understand the banking system and banking industry quite well all of these things are important because you, if you don't understand the industry you won't know what exactly is the data that you require what exactly is the data that you need 
and <clears throat> that is where you know this domain understanding is something that actually defines or can define uh, you know whether an ai is successful or un unsuccessful right i see that uh, some of you guys have a couple of questions uh, as i mentioned i would request you to hold on to your questions till uh, you know i open up the floor for q and a just hold on to your questions and be patient till then and i would be happy to answer each and every one of your questions at that point of time All right. So let me actually start the slideshow so that it's visible in a better manner. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, as per Accenture, Accenture has divided AI into various parts. There are three parts here, sensing, comprehending, and acting. Sensing is the actual hardware system which goes into sensing and collecting the data. So if you are doing computer vision, it is cameras or it is, uh, you know, being able to uh, the computing system which can recognize faces and recognize images if it is audio then it are it is speakers etc so the sensing part is the hardware part generally the hardware part of the ai system then comes the comprehending part which is the actual ai engine where computer vision happens where natural language processing happens to be able to understand what someone has spoken recognize that understand it recognize the images understand what those images represent and then acting upon it the acting part is the actual deployment of that ai engine in real world which is where you create these recommendation engines expert systems etc so through you know these three things sensing comprehending and acting various applications can be created like virtual agents identity analytics cognitive robotics and so in manufacturing cognitive robotics is getting up to be a big deal now where humans on the shop floor are actually almost getting completely replaced by an ai system which is uh, you know uh, involved in manufacturing speech analytics recommendation systems etc so these are three different parts of ai now many of you may have questions here as to you know what is the difference between ai what is the difference uh, between ai and machine learning and deep learning and data science so let's go through this uh, you know briefly first and foremost let me say that data science is more like a mother term which covers everything within it including deep learning including machine learning including artificial intelligence so data science is basically the area or the field which deals with data the analysis of data the creation of systems which are based on the analysis of this data now data science can be at various levels it could be plain and simple creating a dashboard or creating a report which helps you answer the question what happened in the past or it could be plain and simple predictive analytics which can be predicting what could happen in the future like for instance forecasting sales of a company or it could be you know providing recommendations which is machine learning or, or at the you know topmost level it is artificial intelligence which is creating systems which can think and act and learn like, like humans do deep learning is actually the core set of techniques which are used in algorithmic techniques or algorithms which are used in ai right so deep learning let's for uh, you know simplicity sake say is one and the same thing as artificial intelligence 
and deep learning is a subset of machine learning and machine learning is a subset of data science and artificial intelligence so all of these things are you know largely one and the same thing but tied in together right at various levels so it is more about the level or the complexity at which you know you are analyzing the data or you are creating these systems which determines <clears throat> whether you know you can call it ai or you can call it machine learning or you can call it data analytics or data science so now we move on to the section on careers right i am sure a lot of you here are interested in the same so what's the market buzz on artificial intelligence so the as per the international data corporation the worldwide spending on cognitive and artificial intelligence systems is set to grow to 78 billion dollars in 2022 from 19 billion dollars in 2018 so this is a four times growth in just four years so this is a very very fast growth in terms of which companies are actually spending on cognitive and ai systems as per a survey by Ernst & Young, 56% of senior management say that lack of AI talent is holding back the implementation of AI in their organizations. It is the greatest single barrier to implementation of AI. This means they are not able to find AI talent who can actually implement this for them. IBM says that the annual demand for data scientists, data developers, and data engineers is set to reach nearly 700,000 openings. And this is a humongous figure. You know, 700,000 openings every year in the world of data. And that is going to be very, very difficult to meet. Tencent, which is China's one of China's largest conglomerates, says demand for AI talent is going to cross 1 million people around the world. That again is a humongous figure. As per Analytics India magazine, close to 90,000 positions related to data science are being advertised every month. And data scientists earn much more than CAs and IT professionals. As per the Times of India, there's a 400% increase in demand in India for AI and data science skills. So across the board, there is a lot of talk about how there's huge demand for skilled talent in the world of data science and AI, right? What do you know? various other surveys say? So as per LinkedIn, out of the top 20 emerging jobs, machine learning engineer and data scientist are the two top emerging jobs. If you look at another future of jobs report, the emerging roles by 2022, the top 10 out of that, the top two are data analysts and scientists, AI and machine learning specialists. And look at the top 10 declining if that is something which you can see clearly. All of them are process oriented jobs, which are very easy to be replaced by AI systems, right? Administrative secretaries, data entry clerks, accounting, bookkeeping, etc. So these jobs will decline, data science and AI jobs will increase. If you go by the global job portal, indeed.com, this is, they collect data about jobs around the world. And what they say is in artificial intelligence, job openings are rising faster than job seekers. So if you see here, the graph of job openings is going on increasing, but the job seekers, those who are looking for jobs in AI is absolutely flat, right? So this gap is just increasing in terms of the lack of skilled talent in this industry. And that is where salaries are also very, very high. So average salaries, which are at the level of one or two years of experience across various cities in India range between about 11 and a half to 16 lakhs. So imagine you have one 
to maybe two years of experience uh, in industry you are actually getting paid 15 16 lakhs and this these salaries increase quite rapidly as your experience goes up so anyone today who has let's say five to six years of relevant experience can easily earn in the region of 30 to 35 lakhs per year as per a survey by analytics india magazine which are the cities where most of the jobs are so bangalore in cr mumbai are the top three cities where jobs exist and what is the kind of average work experience so if you look at uh, you know the people who are actually working in ai today 27 percent of them are freshers those between zero to one years experience 40 percent have one to two years of experience so between zero to two years of experience 67 percent of the people who are working in ai are there then between three to five years is 19 percent six to ten years is 10 percent and 10 plus years which are more of leaders are four percent so quite clearly there's a good spread of jobs across all different experience levels but yes there's a large chunk of jobs for those between zero to two or zero to three years let's say so even a lot of freshers get opportunities in ai and data science so let me quickly go through our program which is the certified artificial intelligence specialization in association with tcs which will actually actually give you these skill sets which you need to create a career in artificial intelligence so through this program you become a full stack data science and ai expert and get certified by tcs and what do i mean by a full stack data science and ai expert through this course you are going to learn all the relevant tools technologies and techniques which are necessary to automate this decision making and create human level intelligence so all the tools and technologies and techniques that are required from an ai expert today are part of this program so you are going to learn predictive analytics you are going to learn machine learning you are going to learn deep learning data visualization you are going to learn learn tools and languages like r python tensorflow keras sql etc tableau etc and you are going to learn through over 25 real world case studies so you are not just going to learn the theory in isolation or you are not just going to learn programming only you are going to learn how to combine these two things and be able to create ai systems through 25 real world case studies and apart from that you get to work on 15 real world projects to create a ai ready cv so when you work on all these multiple projects you can put these projects on your cv as work experience and that will you know create a huge demand for your cv in the industry the course is designed in such a way that it will create ai experts who can start delivering on the job on day one so you don't need to be trained by anyone else after this program you will be well armed to start working on projects on day one itself and that is what companies love they are looking to hire people they would desperately love to hire experienced people right a lot of the jobs that you see being posted on ai etc say we would like experience but they are not able to find this experience talent because this industry is so new it's so fresh there are still very very few people working in this industry versus the number of job openings that are there and hence the next best thing for them is to hire trained and skilled talent so that they don't need to spend money and time training you they would rather just get you to you know um work on their projects right from day one and that is where these companies come to institutes like advancer to hire uh, from our alumni and student base so this course is designed by industry veterans who have 30 years of experience between them and they you know know exactly what employees require from their fresh talent and that is what they have put into the program so how do we deliver this course 
So this course is delivered through two different methods. One is live instructor led online classes and the other is self paced video based plus faculty support option. So in the live instructor led online class you attend 180 hours of live classes held online and we also give you access to videos. Any and every question or doubt of yours can be asked in the class itself and you will get your response during the class itself. And when you are not attending these classes during the week when you are revising practicing you can ask your questions on our forums or through emails or through scheduled phone calls. So this these classes live online classes are held on weekends. It's a 30 weekend program. That's approximately seven to eight months in duration and every Saturday and Sunday you'll have three hours of online classes. That is each so on a Saturday a Saturday there will be three hours and Sunday that will be three hours. We have a comprehensive learning management system to which all of you will have access for 24 by 7 for your lifetime and all the course material projects assignments forums and each and every class gets recorded. So all of these material and all the class recordings will be part of your learning management system uh, LMS and you will get access to it for your lifetime. So in case you miss a class you can go through the class recording you even if you have attended a class and want to revise you can go through the recording later on when once the course ends and you would like to revise for your interviews or when you start working you want to prepare uh, for what you are doing you can easily go through the recording so it will be like having your you know classes with you for your lifetime it will be like you are going through a live class again and again we certify you at the end of the course based on projects so you need to complete a certain number of projects to clear uh, uh, you know the certification criteria and at the end you can also give a final exam with tcs and once you clear that exam tcs will also certify you so you will have dual certification one from advancer and one from tcs based on projects and a final exam the fees for this course originally is one like seven thousand plus taxes but currently till 31st of july we offer a 40 percent discount and that comes to you at 64,990 plus taxes only which you can pay in interest-free installments and you can reserve your seat with just 5000 rupees for the moment for our next batch which starts on 1st August. So we start on 1st August the timings are 9 to 12 in the morning. In the self paced video based option you don't attend live classes online. You go through 200 hours of recorded videos from our best batch from our best faculty at your pace and time. Since you are not attending live classes your doubt and queries will be resolved on our forum or through email within a period of 24 hours. So you can ask any question or doubt you have and it will always get resolved within a period of 24 hours. There are no deadlines in this option. There are no timelines. You can learn at your time. You can learn at your pace. You can learn as quickly as you want or as slowly as you want. Everything else remains the same except for the fee which is uh, post a 40 percent discount 49,990 plus taxes and again payable in interest-free installments there are no batches for the self-paced program you can start learning today itself even if if you want and you know if you can learn at your time at your pace it's very flexible what exactly are you going to learn in this program so initially we'll start with uh, you know more detailed introduction to data science and ai what is data science what is ai what is machine learning we'll take you through case study which will explain to you how a data science project actually is done in the industry then we'll cover basics of r the r tool basics of statistics basics of uh, data pro how to actually process and clean data then we'll move train you on various statistical techniques both basic and advanced techniques of actually analyzing data and making predictions for the future so this uh, module we will cover for about 60 to 63 hours then we'll move on to the module of machine learning in python where we will again cover the basics of python the basics of machine learning we'll again train you on various uh, you know uh, machine learning techniques machine learning algorithms 
and this module will be again for about 63 to 66 hours and then we will take you through deep learning which is artificial intelligence for another 54 hours or so again right from the basics onwards we'll also provide you videos on data visualization in tableau and data analysis using sql to go through at your time and pace uh, these are videos both for the live option also and for the self-paced option also so all in total you'll be going through about 180 hours of learning uh, and at the end of these 180 hours of classes, let me say not 180 hours of learning because the learning Will also include the time you spend on assignments the time you spend on projects and that will total to more than 450 hours So you'll go through 180 hours of classes and overall 450 hours of learning and at the end you'll come out as an AI expert Our faculty are actually industry professionals who have three to ten years of experience in data science and AI across various domains like marketing, supply chain, banking, telecom, retail, etc. And apart from their years of industry experience, they also have a lot of training experience and they have trained thousands of students between them. So not only do they know their subject, but they also know how to impart the knowledge of this subject to people who are new to it. And that is very important from a faculty's perspective. They should be able to train you well enough there are a lot of people who know ai who know data science but they are not able to impart the knowledge for that and that is where advances faculty actually excel in being able to give that knowledge to you at your level and they come in terms of their educational backgrounds from from some of the best institutes like iits isi bets etc so today i can proudly say that some of the best faculty actually work for advancer we work with fortune 100 and fortune 500 companies in terms of training their teams in terms of training their talent and we also provide all these uh, the same program that you will be going through we also provide them the same certifications that you will be getting and hence our certificates are highly recognized in the industry we work with the who's who like ey deloitte hp pwc lnt g Microsoft, Genpack, Colgate, Palmolive, etc. in terms of training their teams and not only do we train them But we also help them hire from our alumni and student base So a lot of these companies and apart from them a lot of other companies come to us looking for people and we help them hire So thanks for being patient enough in listening to me so far and especially thank you for being patient in the initial stages when we had some technical issues and you guys had to wait for a long time and as a token of our gratitude you know all those who enroll for our ai program by 26th of july will get a further 5000 rupees special discount on the course fee okay so we are making this offer really really lucrative for you with you know what you spend by uh, you know for your one month salary or less than one month salary you can actually become an ai expert and double your salary so before i open up the floor for q and a there are some questions which people ask very very frequently right and some of you have already asked these questions so let me quickly go through it what background or prerequisite is required for this course so for this course ideally those who have an engineering or technical or bsc msc math stats physics computer science or an mca background they should take up this course those who are from an mba or a non-technical background should take a look at our pg program in data science which is in association with a university ups so that's a course which will be more suitable for you if you come from a non-technical background a basic programming background for this course will always be useful even if it's just c c plus plus etc right even if you don't have it not to worry we will be training you from the basics onwards but if you have it it's only a advantage another question we get is how will data science or ai or the courses help your career so what does one actually require from their career what one requires is a career where you keep on growing 
along with that your salary keeps on growing and the work that you are doing is interesting has an impact somewhere and you know keeps you happy and satisfied data science and ai actually provide all three and that is something which cannot be said for a lot of other careers in this world right some will give you two out of three some will give you one out of three some will give you nothing at all but data science and ai gives you all three this is a fast growing industry and when the industry is growing fast your career is also going to grow very very quickly as i have already demonstrated ai and data science pays extremely well and your you know salaries will keep growing rapidly every year and the work that you do is very interesting obviously but apart from that it is going to have a lot of impact for whom you are doing it for so if you are working for a client or if you are working for your company you are creating an ai system it is going to have a tremendous impact on the fortunes of that company because of that you will also be working alongside you know quite often the top management of the company and that is going to make your work very satisfying and it is going to bring you in the limelight also so this is an area which provides all three aspects of a great career to you and i see no reason why anyone should not want to work in data science or ai a third question is what is the salary i can expect after the course so while i can't tell you your exact salary because it depends on a lot of different factors and i may actually need to create an ai model to figure that out but what we have seen is that our students get between a 40 to 100% hike in their salaries and your salary will depend on your background the company the job role etc but between 40 to 100% hike is something that you can definitely expect and finally do you provide placement assistance which some of you have already asked yes we absolutely do so we help you with your resume preparation we help you with your interview preparation once you have been certified a lot of companies come to us from the top it and consulting companies to startups to mid-sized companies they all come to us looking for people looking to hire some of our students and every week we keep sending you such opportunities and we will forward your CVs to these companies if you would like to apply to these openings. And then we will coordinate and schedule your interviews, etc. So every week you will keep getting multiple opportunities from us. So I'll open up the floor for Q&A here. So any questions that you have apart from the ones which I've already answered in the FAQ, feel free to ask and i'll be taking up the questions in the order that they are asked so first asked first answered please make sure you put in your question only once if you find that i'm not answering please don't put it up again it's only because it's lower down the queue each and every question will get answered so kindly do be patient on that and uh, in the meantime you can take a look at these few examples of us you know students what was their past background and how they managed to benefit from our programs all right so i'll take up the question first asked by manoj reddy do uh, sorry by Kashish are there certified undergraduate courses which can be done with other degree courses So this is a program which you can do alongside your degree program Kashish uh, Manoj Reddy your question is do freshers get an opportunity in this field absolutely in present situation Yes, even in this present situation where there are job losses across the board Data science and AI is one area where there is continuing demand and you can actually ask our students because we have been sending multiple opportunities to them every week will the placements be the same for both live and self-paced absolutely the same we do not differentiate uh, as far as our students are concerned based on the learning option they select these learning options are provided only for your benefit and there is no differentiation either in the certificate that we provide or in the services that we provide 
Timshi, your question is you work in the telecom company. How will this program help in telecom or having this course help to make shift to another field? So first and foremost, Timshi, telecom is something where AI is being put to humongous use. You already are seeing what Geo is doing, right? Geo is a telecom company and it has a huge, huge AI team which is creating completely novel systems, completely changing how education will work, health will work, etc. So they are doing a lot of work on that. Having said that, telecom companies sit on huge amounts of data and you probably already know that. Each and every you know, call that is made, SMS that is sent, uh, internet that is used, mobile internet that is used is actually a data point for the telecom company. And they are sitting on terabytes of data. They have humongous amounts of data which they are analyzing to make their services better. So for someone like you who already has good expertise in the telecom domain, you have that domain understanding. You can actually put on, put, uh, learn these AI skills and start working in AI in the telecom domain. Uh, Vimal Kumar, you have a slightly long question. Let me quickly take a look at it. How does an AI ML recipe look like? You mean tools plus coding languages plus mathematics plus aptitude skills. Imagining AI ML being a Lego shape or a Venn diagram. How does it map to uh, learning all the curriculum items listed? Will you gain knowledge to pursue a career as data scientist or is there a priority breakdown? statistics software coding etc okay do we cover the basics but not deep enough for a python developer okay got your question vimal so as you know when i mentioned the let's say the uh, theoretical definition of ai and let me quickly bring that up on your screen right here it is a concept which combines computing technology, maths and domain understanding. So AI is something which requires you to know and understand all three to some extent. At a junior level, probably you don't need domain understanding so much, but you definitely need the computing technology skills. Now these computing technology skills uh, range from knowing uh, coding in R, coding in Python, uh, you know some of these other tools which I mentioned SQL Tableau, etc Then you have maths and statistics. So obviously you need to have a very good grasp of the various algorithms that are being used Now having said that for maths, it doesn't mean you need to be a PhD in mathematics or a PhD in statistics You don't need that kind of knowledge You need to be able to understand how these algorithms work where and what kind of problems they can be applied to what are their pros and cons and what is the eventual output that you are getting so you don't need to be a mathematician or a statistician here you need to have a healthy understanding of how these algorithms work and where they can be applied to that is all and then domain understanding will always come up as you work across multiple industries so if you ask me to put a percentage to how much is technology, how much is coding, how much is maths and stats. So I would say it's probably 40, 60, 40% 40 coding, 60% maths and stats. Now we do cover all of these things from the basics onwards, but when we are teaching you a language like Python, which is a full-fledged programming language which can be used across anything and everything from creating applications to creating software to creating websites to doing machine learning and ai modeling right so we are not going to cover the developer aspects we are only going to cover the python aspects which are related to data science and artificial intelligence and there are multiple libraries in python like scikit-learn like numpy um, you know apart from that there are many others which we are going to teach you all of these are used from a data science machine learning and AI perspective not from a developer perspective from the basics point of view we are going to teach you all the relevant basics I hope that has answered your question women right 
uh, Geeta, how the exams will be conducted, you need more clarity. So from our end, from advancer's point of view and advancer certification, you need to clear certain projects. These projects are part of the course. They are available in the learning management system. As and when, let's say you are in the live class, we inform you to start working on them. You can start working on them and submit them by the deadline. If you are doing self-paced, as and when you feel that you are ready to start attempting the projects, you can do so. As far as the TCS exam is concerned, it's at the moment an online exam. It used to be physical, but because of COVID, they have moved it online and I expect it will remain online going forward too. So it's an online exam which will test both your theory through multiple choice questions and the practical knowledge through a case study, right? And you need to score a combined 50% to clear that exam. So that exam again can be taken once you have cleared our certification and hence you are very confident of clearing it. The next question is from Anupama. Anupama, you are a BSc Computer Science, Maths, Electronics and MBA HR have seven years of experience in HR consulting in SAP at senior level. If you register for the regular DS course time being and complete your course with self-paced learning fully with proper assignments, completion and projects, can you get a job offer? Absolutely Anupama. You have a very good background here to get into data science. You not only have a background in computer science and maths, but having done your MBA worked in HR, you understand the HR domain quite well and you can work in a very fast growing field called as HR analytics. There's a lot of demand for HR analytics folk. and That is something where you can very easily work in. Let me quickly bring up the final slide again. Yeah. So I hope that has answered your question Anupra. Swati, uh, you have a gap of four years. Can you get placements? Swati, these days companies are very open to hiring people who come with a gap. No longer is there, you know, any restrictions anymore. In fact, there are a lot of companies which have special programs to hire people who have gaps, especially women who are wanting to restart their careers. So there is definitely no issue in your having a gap. And especially since you have a gap, it is some somewhat important that you fill up this gap by learning a new skill, learning new things. Because if you want to go back to your earlier job, there will be many people who will already have experience there. But learning something new, especially data science or AI, you can act, apply for data science and AI jobs and companies will be able, happy to hire you because they are not able to find people and you have done something to fill up this gap also. Yes, your question is you're a fresher with internship at Geo. How will the course help you to get a job in machine learning? Wonderful, Yash. So good to know. I'm not sure what exactly is your background in terms of being a fresher, but I assume you are some kind of an engineer. Uh, this as as I had mentioned earlier in one of the graphics that I showed that 27% of people working in AI are actually freshers and that is something which is actually to your benefit because there are a lot of job openings for freshers in machine learning and AI. So this course is going to give you all the requisite skill sets all the knowledge that you need plus the assistance that you need to get a job in this area. So definitely something that you should be looking at. Sudhir, so your question is, is there any life sciences project? So Sudhir, so there is a project on the pharmaceutical industry. And apart from that, you know, at any point of time, if you need a new project, there are always data sets available on the internet. You can get a data set and we can help you create and design a project out of that and make it something which is equivalent to your work experience. Balaji, your question is you have a software uh, QA experience of 14 years in the insurance domain. Can you do a tra career transition to AI jobs? Absolutely, Balaji. In fact, there are roles which are meant for people who have AI skills and who have quality assurance experience. So these are roles also which are to an extent towards QA in the world of AI. So you can easily fit in there immediately. And then as you gain more experience in AI, transition to a completely AI 
kind of role so just uh, in fact uh, just to tell you a uh, couple of weeks ago we had an opening which was meant for only quality assurance people and they wanted such people who could also work on ai projects hari krishnan your question is what is the installment amount for live sessions so hari krishnan these are you know you'll get a six emi facility from our financing partner uh, for which you will need to get approved first by submitting some of your documents so the whatever is the fee if you divide by six installments that is the monthly installment which you have akash your question is your friend is a diploma in electronics but he's good in java python selenium but he can't do his btec due to financial problem can he do ai as he's more interested in ai while he can definitely learn akash the point is companies still have a criteria where you need to be a graduate to get a job right so unless he completes his graduation it will be difficult for him to get a job tushar no we are not conducting any classroom program because anyways you can't attend a classroom program in this coronavirus situation government is not allowing classrooms at the moment right so all the classrooms around the world have actually shifted online be it that at a pre primary level or at a phd level so you know change with the world online live online classes is as good as a classroom program mahesh your question is you have 9 years experience in automate automotive design is it suitable to change your career at this stage so mahesh uh, you come from a niche background which is automotive design uh, there is some work going on at in you know the world of automobile and automotive design and design in general where ai is actually getting into designing where ai will actually do the designing itself so that is something which you can explore learn ai maybe you know within your company wherever you work or on your own try to create a system which can create these automotive designs on your own given your background it doesn't it won't fit into any other kind of industry so for instance if you want to change your industry move out of automotive to some other industry your experience may not be considered so this is where if you actually gain the experience of ai in your industry and then make a shift that will be much easier for you uh, reshma you can find the details of our data science program it's largely similar we don't cover uh, deep learning and we don't cover data visualization over there but everything else largely remains the same i am just going to put up the link to that program right here so that you can take a look at it okay so i'm putting it in the chat and you can click on it and take a look at the course shri kritika you are a msc graduate in mathematics how will this course be helpful can you start your career with the help of this course absolutely that's the whole point of uh, this course kritika right all that we have been discussing right now is for people like you who want to start your career i understand that you know you may not have started your career post your graduation but as i said people companies are pretty open to hiring people with gaps and your msc in mathematics will be very very helpful in artificial intelligence because as i mentioned to someone earlier 60% of it is maths and stats so you come with the perfect background for it guys i'm just opening up a small poll on the screen for you uh, we would quickly appreciate your response on that right you just need to click on the radio button to make your choice and that's it these responses are anonymous so it will just help us in understanding the numbers Sanjeev your question is you have you have been at a leadership role in the retail industry in various top companies with an experience of 25 years um 
should you go for this course and enhance your career you are in sales marketing visual merchandising product merchandising sales marketing training distribution etc what role can you play in the industry so sanjeev for someone of your background we actually have a program called as the data analytics specialization since you are at uh, you know a pretty senior level with not much technical exposure at all i would suggest you take a look at our data analytics specialization course because that will be much more helpful to you in terms of understanding how data can be used in business how data can be analyzed and how it helps in solving various business problems in the world of sales and marketing so that's a course which will be a better fit for you than ai also from your point of view you know at your level i don't think you are looking for a job or you are you know likely to get a job in the industry in this industry at the moment it is more about enhancing your skill sets and being of greater value add to your existing company or maybe if you want to get into freelance consulting that will also be very very helpful vijay kumar all the infra that is all these tools and technologies r python sql tableau etc are all available to be downloaded on your own computer for free so you can download it and work on it at any point of time you want rajesh your question is you are from a retail background with more than 15 years experience as a business analyst how is it going to benefit your career if you choose this field or what are the chances to get a better job in field so again coming from a retail background as a business analyst rajesh the data science course will be better for you i don't know your educational background but either the data analytics or the data science course will be better for you and uh, you know as you can as you would probably have seen on your screen just some time earlier before the poll came up one of our students had 4 years of experience in the retail industry and he moved to fractal analytics which is one of the top analytics and data science companies in india today as a data scientist so there is again a lot of domain knowledge and domain background that you have which you can leverage by adding on the data science skill sets on top of it and working in this field in data science kashish your question is what does a data analyst do so again these are at different levels as i mentioned within the whole space of data science so a data analyst will not be creating ai systems he will not be working on that high end technology he will not be working on machine learning he will be working on understanding what has happened in the past what does the data say about it creating reports creating dashboards and probably predicting the future using some statistical techniques so that is what a data analyst does a data scientist will be working much more on predictions creating predictions using advanced statistical techniques a machine learning person will be working on creating you know things like recommendation engines various machine learning systems where the data gets ingested and analyzed in real time and the system is able to learn on its own and that will be at a more higher technical level right so these are more levels of exposure to technology and the ability to work with technology which a person has abhijit uh, your question is once the pg is completed are we getting a pg certificate by ups or tcs or from both so abhijit these are two separate programs one is the pg program in data science with ups and one is the ai program with tcs so in the ai program you get a tcs certification in the data science program you get a certificate from ups Roshan uh, your question is what are the chances of getting a job in data science and ai if you have a gap of 5 plus years in your career so again roshan you should be able to convince a company as to why you have such a huge gap right either you are working on your business etc or your startup or something in that case it's not a gap you have been working but if you have been doing nothing for 5 plus years then you need to have a very very good reason why you have not been working and uh be able to convince the employer for that if you are able to do so the chances are still pretty good 
Abhishek uh, Kumar, your question is you want to understand the difference between job assistance and job guaranteed given by advancer and data trained. Okay, so Abhishek job guarantees do not exist in this world. If someone is giving you a job guarantee. I'm pretty sure I don't know who these guys are, but I'm pretty sure at some level they are fooling you. Think about this Abhijik. I don't know which university you have passed out from or which college you went to or where else you have studied, but has any of them given you a job guarantee? No. Do any of the top universities of this world which have 100% placements give any of their students job guarantees with a money back guarantee? No, though they can do so very easily, right? And I am IIT is generally able to place most of its students. They can always give any kind of money back guarantee, but no one does. No university, no well known institute, no college around this world gives a job guarantee. And for the simple reason for that is while any university, any college, any institute can train you, can train you really, really well, they cannot guarantee your performance in the interview. They cannot guarantee a situation like, you know, COVID-19 where for a period of time, all kinds of jobs disappear. In that sense, if someone is guaranteeing you a job, it generally means that there is some kind of scam behind it. They will have a list of 100 different conditions which you will need to fulfill. And I can tell you very clearly that at some point or the other, you will not be able to fulfill at least one of those conditions. And they will say, sorry, you did not meet these conditions. We will not give your money back. If job guarantees were so easy, all the top institutes in data science of which Advancer ranks as one, which I can very proudly say, would have been giving you job guarantees none of these top institutes do. We can only provide you assistance. We can only provide you a possibility of getting interviews. We can only provide you opportunities and that is all. I hope that has answered your question Abhishek. If there's anything else feel free to speak with us. Uh, you know if you want any kind of assistance on this. <clears throat> this is our contact details. You can please feel free to speak with us, but I would really urge you wherever you learn data science, wherever you learn AI, do not fall for a job guarantee gimmick. Geeta, your question is, is there any age bar for this job? Uh, so Geeta, generally there is no age bar, but yes, I mean, if you are at a fairly advanced age, like 40 years plus, then it becomes much more difficult. Oh, you are 33 years old. Okay, great. So there should be no problem, Geeta, in that. Yes, software development was your domain. Okay, you were the one who was an intern at Geo. Great. So yes, I'm pretty sure that working in machine learning, machine learning, learning AI, is going to give you a job worth at least seven to eight lakhs per annum at a starting salary. Bright, your question is you are a BSc in biology. How can this help you? And in this, is this program right for you? Uh, not exactly bright. This program, as I mentioned, is more for those who come with some kind of technical background. Since you don't have that background, our data analytics course or data science course will be better for you. Uh, Kashish, yes, since you are still in stand, you have just completed 12 standard, you are about two years too early. Probably after two years, you can think about doing such a program. Though it's great that you are so interested at this moment. It's really good to see this but you know give yourself another two years in your degree and then do this program. Vikas your question is you have a teaching background with eight years experience. You have done mtech in EC. Can you get a job or start a job in ML or AI? What is the scope? 
so because since you are already you know in the teaching industry you there is definitely a possibility of your moving to uh, you know working in the proper industry maybe your teaching experience of 8 years doesn't get counted what can definitely get counted is uh, you know the fact that you have your mtech and you can start working maybe not as a fresher but someone at a one or two years experience level and get a job in ml or ai swati your question is uh, in this pandemic situation is it really easy to get placements and how you can go for an interview okay so in this pandemic situation swati we have already placed more than 12 people in the last month right usually our placements range in the region of about 20 odd people every month but last month we placed about 12 people and this month in july we are already at 17 so definitely things are improving and we are headed back to a normal situation now how you can go for interview so all these interviews are be conducted online or telephonically so again that's not a worry all the onboarding is also being done through work from home so again not a problem at all now the other thing is by the time you complete this course get certified etc another 8 to 10 months would have gone by by which time i do believe and i do hope that the situation will return back to normal so this question then largely shouldn't be applicable at that point of time saroj your question is you have 16 years experience in linux is it feasible feasible to change your profile after 16 years to ai definitely it gets more difficult as you cross you know 10 12 years of experience saroj but you know you have to think of it from this perspective what is your future in linux i am sure you have been you are doing today what you have been doing 5 years earlier also you are in a stagnant area your career is stagnating and you should take this chance to add in new skill sets to your portfolio even if it is slightly difficult there is always a probability that you will be able to move to artificial intelligence or more to data science so why not take that chance if you continue doing what you are your career is going to head nowhere right and eventually probably after another 5 or 6 years you know with the way things are going in the it industry layoffs keep coming up etc one of these days maybe your chance will come though i hope not but at that point of time you need to be prepared with new skills and that is where learning never goes to waste okay you may not get a job as you are doing the course you may not get a job maybe two months after doing the course but there is always the ability to persist and persevere which will see you through and get your job in ai uh vikas i hope i have already answered your question yes i have um mahesh i i hope again i have already answered your question and geeta also uh geeta your question is the curriculum of ups and tcs same or different so in the ai tcs program we also cover deep learning we also cover data visualization in tableau which we don't cover in the data science with ups program everything else is the same uh hari krishnan uh, with regards to the answer i gave to the 5 years plus gap so that is you know where you need to be able to convince a, uh, convince your em future employer where, why did you have that gap and what were you doing in that period right so if you had your own business or your own startup that is not a gap you are working but if you are not doing anything you need to be able to give a convincing reason for not being doing for not doing that because 5 years is a huge period right of not doing anything many companies are able to i mean sorry to sound sexist here or in the reverse way but many companies can understand that when women are concerned right so women had uh, uh, probably 
a maternity break or something but where men are concerned then they become more suspicious and that is all uh, anupama till now no company has asked us for you know a cut off in academics that they need to have xyz percentage so that has not been a worry so far so Sheil, your question is you are currently working in the telecom industry in rf having 13 years experience okay uh so what exactly is your question Sushil? is it about how you can proceed further so again i had already answered one, the question from someone else in the telecom industry earlier that you already have the telecom domain knowledge and domain understanding by adding in the ai and data science skills on top of that you can work in the telecom industry as a data scientist and as i mentioned telecom has huge and humongous amounts of data right from being able to you know predict how the network is going to behave to en ensuring that the network stays up a lot of data science and ai goes into that these days and that is where you can work too Hare Krishnan, in general our batches have about 25 to 30 people Yes, uh, as far as rounds of interviews for data science and ML are concerned, it depends on the company. But on, on average, you can have about three rounds. One will be HR, one will be, you know, a technical round, one will be a senior round. And yes, there could be a case study or a, you know, test also at the start. So depending on the company, there could be about three to four different rounds. Madhurima, your question is, is AI more advanced as compared to data science and data analyst? Yes, Madhurima. So AI is more advanced than data science and data science is more advanced than data analysis. So AI will also cover deep learning, which is actually the artificial intelligence techniques. Data science will not cover that and data analytics will not cover machine learning. Suraj, your question is you're a BSc IT graduate and you have two plus years of experience as a server support management in IT. How will this course help you? So since you have just two years experience Suraj, you can easily shift your industry from, you know, your career from what you're doing to AI and that's going to be a pretty simple shift for you. Uh, Vikas, uh, I have already answered your question and you know the answer is yes you should definitely go in for this because there is always an opportunity for you to make a move into artificial intelligence and ml a lot of people from a teaching background have come to us in the past and have made such a shift Abhijit, uh, no, this is not a PG certificate in AI. The PG certificate is in data science from UPES. Uh, right, that's all the syllabus is available on our website. I have already put in the link for data science in the chat. You can click on that. And from there, you can go to the data analytics course also. Tushar, you have two years experience as a business analyst in banking domain. Should you opt for data science or AI? So what exactly is your educational background, Tushar? You are a BE, right? So you can go in for AI, Tushar. Uh, Adnan, no, these are not two different areas. I think you probably missed what I was talking about in the session. Data science is the umbrella term. AI is part of data science. So I've reached the end of the list of questions here. Uh, if there are any further questions, uh, please feel free to ask or we can end the session here. So thank you so much all of you for joining this session and I look forward to all of you joining the course going forward. Please make use of the discount offers and I look forward to seeing all of you join as soon as possible.
thank you so much and again 